for the introduction. So again, this was joint work with Alessandro Rozza from our startup, Waynot, and colleagues from Australia, Dito Menon, Richard Nocke, and Liz and Ku. So why should we care about label noise? Uh, when we are just a final user or data set for vision, uh, we often forget or overlook uh, the problem of labeling those images. But when we collect this data set, uh, we quickly realize that uh, uh, labels are expensive to obtain because they uh, require human intervention. And so we resort to uh, proxies such as web queries or, qu or crowdsourcing. But, uh, and those are great because they let us scale to very large data sets. But at the same time, they introduce a systematic noise in our train set. So we like to be robust to uh, those problems, or at least uh, our algorithms should know about that. So it's not surprising there has uh, been lots of work on this area recently. Um, I will cite a few uh, related work to our approach here. I mainly, uh, we mainly see two different areas. One that is mostly pushed by the computer vision community that is about making deep neural networks aware of, uh, of our model of noise, either by changing the, the training procedure or uh, by building layers into that, that can take care uh, of, the, of the noise into the network. And those are often a very good performance as scalable, but depend on the heuristics. And in some cases, crucially, they need uh, clean labels to, to perform well at all. On the opposite side of the spectrum, um, we have a method from a machine learning community that are theoretically sound by studying robustness property of the loss function. But again, crucially, those have the opposite issues, which is they rely on a, a realistic assumption. Uh, mostly is about knowing something about the noise distribution beforehand. So this is a problem. And we will try to uh, put together the best of the two worlds in, in this work. Um, and we'll, we'll do that also leveraging uh, on some uh, ideas on how to estimate the noise distribution from noisy data only. So let's go on the contribution of this work. We will present to you a different procedural alternative for loss correction, which uh, I'm going to show you they're going to be uh, independent from uh, your choice of data set, uh, architecture, and also your, pico your choice of the loss function. And those come um, together with theoretical guarantees of unbiasedness of the model you obtain. And we will also study um, a procedure for noise estimation by using the same neural net. And then we will test on a, um, a, a bunch of different um, data sets coupled with different uh, ideas for uh, architecture, also recurrent nets, as you say. And we will establish a state of the art on one particular data set. So just to quickly <coughs> recap some notation that is So our sample will come from a distribution P of x and y, where we will encode labels have indicator vectors. And our objective is to train a, a neural network that will approximate the conditional distribution of x, of, of x given, of, of y given x, sorry. So we do that as usual. We want to minimize the empirical loss, loss associated, empirical risk associated with a loss function. So if that bothers you, that L might be the cross entropy or a square loss. That's irrelevant here. And also we'll define a vector loss uh, where you compute the loss on any possible ground through uh, value of the label and you put it in a vector, just for simplicity. So what can we say about the noise that we assume? So our sample at the end is going to be noisy, so uh, the label that we see um, are, are going to be corrupted by noise, so um, we, we indicated with uh, a tilde on, on the Y. And the model of the noise is from a transition matrix T, a square matrix, that have on every row the probability of flipping the label into uh, another one uh, by chance, by random. And this is a raw stochastic matrix, but otherwise doesn't have any other structure. And that's why it's called asymmetric in the literature. So crucially, also notice we assume that uh, the noise is independent from particular feature of an image. How can we be robust to such noise? So first recipe is called backward loss correction. It's inspired by Natarajan et al. And what we do is we take the vector loss and we multiply it by t minus 1. For now, we assume to know t, of course. And the idea is that we want to act defensively. We don't want just to compute the label on one particular um, value for the, lo sorry, the loss on one particular value for the, for the label. But we do so by a linear combination of losses weighted by the inverse probability of the noise. Uh, this comes with um, guarantees, theoretically. 
so this is an estimator that is unbiased, an estimator of, of the loss that be, the original loss that we wanted is unbiased. And in particular, this is interesting for learning because that means that left hand side, we obtain a minimizer of the risk, of the noise risk for the corrected loss that is equivalent of the minimizer to the minimizer of the risk on the clean labels with the original loss, which is, by the way, basically a definition of robustness if you want. So second idea. Um, we, it's called the forward loss correction, and it's inspired by Sukhbatar et al. So here we have um, um, basically, in, in, we bake into the loss uh, a multiplication of the, ma the matrix T uh, after the output of the uh, softmax of the, of the neural net. So basically we are noisifying, noisifying somehow the prediction and comparing them with the noisy loss. So surprisingly, this has basically the same guarantee as the one before, uh, although the difference. So again, we obtain an unbiased estimator of the minimizer. So again, this is proven robust. Um, how do we get T? That's, uh, that's the main point, of course. So for that, we extend uh, our technique uh, due to uh, Menon et al. And bear with me, there are some technical details on this slide. So we have to assume two things first. There must be some perfect example in your data set, which means some images that are just stereotypical, very hard to mistake. And the second, you assume that your model is powerful enough to, um, to uh, approximate very well the noisy conditional distribution. And we can train this because we have the, the noisy label, the noisy data. So how do we obtain an estimator of the, of the, of the noise? So we train the neural net on this noisy data, and then two steps. We go to search for this perfect example by these argmax on your data set. And finally, you use those to probe the same condition, noisy conditional distribution. And that's how you, you can fill up the matrix T. So this is a two-line proof if, if you want to um, um, if you, if you see why it works. But uh, the intuition is the following. Since there are perfect example, mistakes on them must be due to noise and to nothing else. So that's how we can estimate the noise. So now let's step back and see what we have achieved so far and put it all together. So the algorithm is very simple at this level of abstraction. So what we do is first we train the neural net on the noisy data, and then we can estimate the matrix T. And second, we retrain the same neural network, but this time correcting the loss function. And that's it. There is nothing else to do. So no change in, in the trading procedure. You just need to run it twice, and there is an, esti an estimation in the middle. But otherwise, there is no other change. So let's see something about the experiment on this. Our goal here is to show both robustness, but at the same time also the fact that this is in, we achieve that independently by architecture and data set. So we pair um, um, a few different data set and architecture in the experiment. MNIST with fully connected uh, layers, IMDB with LSTM, and CIFAR 10 and 100 with various uh, residual nets. And, and at the end, we also uh, use um, do some experiment on a real uh, world data set that is very noisy. So the kind of result, just to give you uh, a glance on the result, so we inject, uh, we, sim we simulated the noise uh, and at the first, and uh, mm, for example, by this kind of matrix D that are uh, very sparse and asymmetric, so very structured kind of noise, not uniform. Um, at the bottom, you see the, the kind of estimator that we obtain from that with our procedure. And um, for example, on CIFAR 10 with a particular ResNet, uh, that's the picture that you see. Uh, the more noise, um, the less uh, uh, the cross entropy can, can have good performance, so it's just doomed to not be able to be robust to the noise at all. While with our forward or backward technique, we can actually achieve some robustness. In particular, forward works very well in, in most of the domains. You see, of course, if you have to estimate the matrix T, we are losing something, but still we are very far from not being robust at all as uh, with cross entropy. So on a real domain, this is um, um, a data set that was given to us by Xiao et al. Um, from two years ago, uh, CVPR. I would like to thank the author for the help for the setup of the experiment, by the way. So this is an uh, interesting domain of one million images that was that were scraped online uh, on uh, um, Clothing. Um, very, very difficult because of some of these um, classes are actually defined in a fuzzy way. So even for human, unless you are a fashion expert, I can tell you it's hard. Um, so what you obtain here, um, we have row three is, was the previous state of the art obtained by um, training together with EM to AlexNet. What we do is uh, something uh, somehow simpler. So since we have uh, both 
clean and, um, and noisy labels we want to use to leverage above to obtain state of the art, of course. So first of all, we pre-train with the forward loss, that's the best performing, on the uh, noisy data. And after that, we use the, the clean labels so to fine tune uh, the parameters of the net. And that's it. So just to summarize what we've done. So we introduced our end-to-end -end framework for training neural nets uh, robust to label noise with theoretical guarantees that work in pair or better than previous work, and also is a state-of-the-art on a particular data set. Uh, I suggest forward correction instead of better, and apparently that's uh, because of ease on optimization more than for statistical reasons. Uh, there are limitations, of course. Uh, we found um, uh, some hardness in uh, applying the noise estimation when you have many, many classes and uh, the noise intensity is very high, so that's something that we, we should improve in the future. And a potential way to do that is following uh, uh, some current trend that we see on research on the topic where people will have actually managed to um, backpropagate uh, uh, training error also in the noise estimation process. So that's a promising way to improve, probably. I'll stop here. Thank you.